Hey guys, it's Jessica and today we're gonna do a, I think, full face with a ton of new products from Wet n Wild. Most of these are like brand new, some of them are limited edition, and then some of them are ones that have been out for a while but I've just never tried, like their stick foundation. So I'm excited to give this a try. I found a lot of loves from the brand Wet n Wild. Honestly, they've just, they're one of those brands that makes me feel nostalgic because you know, it's one of the cheaper brands of the drugstore and always has been. While I do think some of their prices have risen a bit, I do think they're doing a pretty good job keeping their prices low or at least lower than what else is out there at the drugstore. And that's huge because, you know, we're we're living in a time where L'Oreal here in the United States is selling foundation for, you know, $14.99, $15.99, $16.99. Things are getting up to the $20 price mark where Wet n Wild is keeping their prices usually under 10. So I am appreciative of that. So I'm gonna grab my phone and get a little footage. I've laid everything out that I have here to give a try some of the rebel rose collection some of just their new liquid cat suit like high shine lipsticks and then like their stick foundation some blushes and bronzers some of their pump collection i'm going to try to pick the ones that i've had the most requests from you guys to try out here today so the first thing i'm going to try out is the wet n wild photo focus rose toner this was released as part of their rebel rose collection which is limited edition however a lot of their limited edition products actually say it on there this one doesn't so if it's really good it'd be nice if they just kept it in the line but let me get the mister the mister seems pretty nice Let's just give it a try. Wow, that is a thorough mister, but it's not bad. It's like actually an even mist. It definitely smells heavily of rose. So it's $7.99, it says it's alcohol-free, hydrating, and soothing, and it refreshes, softens, and clarifies the skin while removing impurities. So that is nice. I figured I would spray that on and let it dry. I wanted to try this new lip scrub from that same line. Um, I've tried one of the Wet n Wild lip scrubs before. It was like a watermelon one, and this looks really similar. I don't think it has the smell. It has kind of an odd smell. It's just a lip scrub. This is $3.99. So it's, it's got extra fine sugar to kind of exfoliate the dead skin cells on your lips. I could use that today. It definitely has a smell, but it's not like I can't quite pinpoint it. It's not crazy alarming. Like I can't really smell it even though it's right below my nose, but like, but if I put my nose right next to it, there's a very slight smell, but it's nothing overpowering. So if smell bothers you, I don't think this will bother you, but I typically just kind of rub it there and let's see. Kind of wipe it off with the clean washcloth. Huh. I always say definitely uh, do it before you do anything else on your face. Do a uh, lip scrub because you end up with scrubbies all over your face. I don't think it like completely, I think it got like a little bit of the extraneous dead skin, but I still just have a little bit of dryness that's healing from being wind chapped a couple days ago. So I don't think it like magically solved that, but I do think there were like some crusties it got up. Honestly, that's how I feel about like every lip scrub ever. You do not need to spend a lot of money on lip scrubs. I really like this one, but I like the Milani lip scrub even better. I can link below and it smells like vanilla. But if you're sensitive to smell and that would be overpowering for you, this would definitely be a good option. So I don't think it's bad. It feels very similar to that Milani one. There's some kind of weird noise happening outside. It's a rainy day and that's why the lighting's a little dull. But there's like popping noises that have been going on. It almost sounds like fireworks, but it's like mid-March. So I have two more products I want to use, but I can't, I don't think I wanna to try to use both at the same time. I think it'll be too much. But the first one is this Wet n Wild Photo Focus Rose Primer Serum. It's $7.99, it says it's water-based, uh, it moisturizes, it preps the skin for longer lasting makeup, and it's kinda of got this almost metallic look to it. So I'm assuming it would add a little bit of glow to the skin. And then in the same kind of bottle is their Rose Multi-Use Oil. And they say this is floral infused multi-oil that can be used on body, hair, and nails. So I do love facial oils, but I feel like the Rose Primer Serum, um, I don't know, I'm more intrigued to try this. Of course, I will give the multi-use uh, one a try, and it's got these really pretty like flowers within. Mm, now I kinda wanna use that. Mm. Now these both do say limited edition. That's what's so hard about products like this, like, it's limited edition and so like what if I try this and I fall in love with it and then I never see it again like especially with face products like this that just sucks because you're going to go through it if you like it whereas an eyeshadow it takes you longer to go through so if you fall in love with like a limited edition eyeshadow palette you probably aren't going to need to repurchase it but like face products I feel like man you're going to go through it and be like oh I really want to buy it again and it's no longer sold so I just kind of shook it up and it's got a medicine dropper here not the strongest medicine dropper, but they never really are. It really is like a really pretty pink tone. I'm just gonna kind of 
oh, it's thinner than I thought. I expected it to have a little bit more viscosity, but it definitely doesn't leave that pink hue on the skin. It just, it doesn't feel sticky either. It's it's like more of a liquid. So we'll see. While that is kind of setting settling into the skin, I feel like I probably could use that oil because this serum I thought would be more oily, but it's not. So why don't we go ahead and give that a try? So I just wanna try this. I'll probably end up putting on, I've got other lip products that at the end I'm gonna try on instead of this, but for now I do need something on my lips to kind of moisturize. So this is from the same Rebel Rose collection. And by the way, a lot of this was sent to me. I figured that was probably obvious, but I wanted to say it. A lot of it was, but then I also bought some of it. So. It's a mix, but you guys know I'm always giving my, my opinion on them, good or bad. So this is their Perfect Pout Jelly Balm. It's $3.99, and it is translucent, and it's kind of like this grayish black. And it says it's got pH-activated ingredients that transform to a sheer pink tint on the lips. I just said pink really weird. Pink. Oh, it's uh, glidier than you'd think. It's really thin, but crazy like, woo. My lips are pink. I better be careful. I got some on the outer outer rim there. It does feel moisturizing though. I mean, if you're on the go and you just want something quick, that's pretty cool. Kind of looks like I have a Kool-Aid stain though, doesn't it? <laughs> I was doing a little research. The Rebel Rose is available at uh, Ulta's website, but the Pump Collection is not. It's available on CVS's website. So, and of course, at random stores, you'll see these popping up. So keep your eyes peeled if you're dying to try something. You don't have to order it online. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this kind of primer oil, multi-use oil. Yeah, this feels more like akin to the facial oils I typically use, just oilier. But honestly, you guys, on the days I don't use facial oil, which I feel like it's been a few months, I've been trying out so many different primers, I feel like I'm, I haven't been using my facial oils as much. I notice a big difference in the way my skin looks all day long. My skin looks so much better. Now, if you have super oily skin, it's one of those things that it might be harder to find the exact right oil, but if you've got normal to dry skin, I really do, you know, I give it a minute or two to kind of sink in, but I really do feel like it makes a difference. This oil is not sinking into the skin. Like, I feel like a lot of my favorite oils do, and that's why it works, but this just feels like it's kind of sitting on top of the skin. like. I feel like I could wipe off as much oil as I started with. Like that is not normal for a facial oil in my skin. So I don't know that that is something I would recommend. So to help with this, they came out in their Wet n Wild Pump Collection, which was like a collection of like workout kind of multi-use products, if you will. Um, they came up with these partner up little clicky things that you, that you can take the lid off and click them into these on either side So it's like a connector a lot of brands have done stuff like that in the past. This is their primer stick And as far as I know, it's supposed to be kind of a pore filling Primer, so I'm just gonna kind of focus it in those areas. I need that kind of smoothing a little bit there and just kind of spread it with my fingers a bit it does feel like it's smoothing the area. It feels really nice. And you can see that it definitely toned down the oil right there in the center, because you can see the oil on either side. So, so far I'm enjoying. We'll see how makeup sits atop it. So I have a couple of options for foundation. I have the Wet n Wild Pump Makeup Lockers, where it's a foundation, and then you can flip up this top area, and it's got like a corrector and a highlighter. But the corrector and highlighter is like the same in all of them. I'm like, uh... I didn't like right off the bat that you open it and it's just like this like weird swipey thing. I'm not dying to try that. I'm really more excited to try the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation. I have had so many people ask about it. So let's give this one a try. I'm gonna try the shade 849A Shell Ivory. I accidentally bought the wrong shade um, a while ago when I was showing you guys my like random haul of like lifestyle stuff, cutesy stuff for the house and a little bit of makeup. So I'm just gonna start and I'm actually gonna use, even though I don't think it's, no, I don't think it's made for it. It's this Wet n Wild brush. Why not? Ooh, it's from their Rebel Rose collection. I think it's made for like cream or powder blush, but first of all, look at this brush. Okay, let's take a minute. It's, it's super cheap plastic. However, it's under 10 bucks and it is a really cute brush. Like if you, are one of those people that you just really like cute brushes. You'd like it. It's super soft. That just blended that stick foundation like a dream. 
I didn't think it would do that good. I just figured I'd give it a try. So that was really nice. I do want to try blending this also with the sponge. I have a feeling it's not going to do super well with the sponge because this does seem nice and hydrating, which is very exciting for me. But I did buy the Wet n Wild makeup sponge here. It's a little pink thing. Okay, first of all, I'm not liking this pink on my lips anymore. It's like too much. I kind of want to wipe it off, but I did, I'm going to leave it on for the sake of trying it out. So this sponge is so, um, wow, just wow. It's super, like it got really big really fast and it's really like squishy. It reminds me of the Flower Beauty purple sponge, that light purple one that I adore. Um, it reminds me of that. So that's exciting. I feel like budget beauty sponges have come so far and there are so many, like my favorite one, like the L'Oreal one. I would love to love this one even more because it's cheaper. <laughs> so we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of paint a little bit and by a little bit, I mean a lot. This is a really nice shade match. Oh, actually that looks nice. Okay. This I'm liking this stick foundation. It's way more moisturizing than most. So I recently tried the, uh, what was it? The Neutrogena Hydra Boost Hydrating Foundation Stick. It's way more expensive than this. It's like 15 freaking dollars if I'm remembering right. And I tried it in a recent video I can link below, trying a bunch of Neutrogena stuff that I'd always kind of overlooked at the store, but I was like, I'm gonna give them a try. I did like, like their blush I fell in love with, but the, stick was not hydrating. I want a little more coverage, so I think I'm gonna use the little brush for my nose because I don't wanna wipe all of it. Okay, so one pass on my face. I feel like it covered a lot. Is this a high coverage product? No, absolutely not even close. You've got big blemishes to cover. This is not gonna be, this is not gonna be it for you. Um, really, I'm not sure that stick foundations are gonna be ideal because I do feel like I really like the Hourglass Vanish one but I might like this one more because it's just easier to blend out on the skin. I think this one's even more hydrating. Like it's not, it's not kind of sticking to those drier areas of my face where most stick foundations do. Heck, most foundations in general do. But look at it up close, you guys. I feel like it looks really nice. There is nothing more exciting than falling in love with a product that you know you could buy a million times and it's not gonna like, like it just doesn't break the bank. That is fantastic. So obviously I'll try that more. If you, I've started doing these kind of review roundups on my channel where I'm updating all of these kinds of videos where I'm doing first impressions, get ready with me's with new products. So I'm doing them every month so that you can kind of get an idea. Now that I've tried it basically two months to try out products more after doing my first impressions, then I show you in a video like, okay, yes, I'm still loving this. It actually got better over time or no, now I've tried it more and I hate it, etc. So definitely stay tuned. All of this will be updated for sure. I gotta wipe off this lip. Oh no, let me see if I can wipe it off. I'm just gonna put a lip balm on in the meantime. Yeah, it's just like totally stained the area. I don't know that I like that. I like lip stains, but I don't like my lips to look that pink unless like I'm going for a pink lipstick. And in that case, I want it to look a little more perfected. So I don't think that's my cup of tea. I like a light pink tint. Like I do have a few products like that that I do like, but that one was almost too much and it wasn't helping the dryness of my lips. So again, I don't know that I'd recommend it. So I'm gonna quickly do my concealer and brows. I don't have a wet n wild concealer and brows to try with you today. I have tried the Photo Focus concealer and I did like it. I just no longer have it. I'd had it for so long. I'm sure I decluttered it, but I'll be right back. So I just did it and realized I wasn't recording, but I was trying out the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation and I just put some on my nose because my nose is so naturally red and one of my favorite things to do with cushion foundations is to use them for touching up because they're quick. They tend to kind of meld into the skin really nicely. The puff it actually comes with is actually usually, usually really good. They're typically made, they're made to go with cushion foundations. They're not like the things you get with like pressed powders and things like that, that you know, you can kind of take them or leave them. These are actually meant to go with cushion foundations. They're definitely different. And I do think the Wet n Wild one is actually pretty decent. I don't think it's the best one I've ever used when it comes to the puff, but it does a really good job. I'm gonna use my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. Again, I don't have a Wet n Wild one. Don't kill me, I know. So I do wanna try the new Wet n Wild Color Icon bronzers. I'm pretty sure these are part of their normal collection and they have, I wanna say four or five shades. I have two of them here. Um, this one I think is a little orangier than what I really want. Um, 
And this is in the shade Ticket to Brazil. They used to have this, but they had it in like the rounded kind of thing. Um, and then this one is called Sunset Strip Tease. And this is pretty sure this is a new shade. Um, this one looks like the perfect kind of bronzy shade for me. And now that we've powdered, this is a good time to do it. I'm actually going to use... This is an It brush for Ulta, their powder brush. I'm actually going to use this for... Wow, this packs some punch. It's just nice and bronze. Obviously, this is a lot. Um, and we'll kind of blend it together to make it look good with the blush and stuff. But this is a nice bronzer like if you are self tanning and so all of your foundations are maybe a little light this is a great way to kind of warm your face up and once we get blush and stuff on it just kind of all works together so i've already powdered and i had like a contour stick i wanted to try and this blush stick the blush stick is the only blush i actually have to try so we're gonna do it anyway um ooh, this is blending so it's this little tiny blush stick i think it's limited edition for this pump collection but if they're really good wet and wild make them permanent this is going on so pretty. It's reminding me a bit of that Maybelline one I really like. The Maybelline stick that I think is being discontinued, but it blends really easily. This one has a little bit more pigment to it. It's not like catching in weird spots. That's pretty cool. So enjoying this. That was a surprise. I love cream blush sticks. So I have two highlighters to try. I don't know how we're going to do this. We have the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Bloom Time. I've heard a lot of people talk about. And this one, let's swatch it. I haven't swatched it yet. Wow, that is pretty. It's like, let me just show you an unblended swatch right there. That is really, really pretty. So, but then I also have this loose one. That's it, their Mega Glow Loose Highlighting Powder. And it is in the shade I'm So Lit. They had a couple of shades, but it's truly a loose powder. Let's get a swatch of this. It catches the light really beautifully. It's, it's down there. I feel like the loose one's gonna almost look a little more natural on the skin. I kinda wanna try the loose one. I don't use a lot of loose powders, um, but I know that I like the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder Formula is nice. It stays on all day. I've tried them before, and so I kinda wanna try one that I haven't tried. I'm using this Milani Highlighting Brush, and I'm just gonna get some, tap some off. Wow! It's definitely like punchy, but I like it. I don't like that every single day. Oh my gosh. So I do think it's tending to kind of look like a stripe, like it's just sitting on top of that powder. So let's see if I can kind of blend this together a bit. So I like that. That I think I'll play with more, but I'm excited to try it in different ways and with different foundations underneath, because I do feel like it's kind of catching just a little bit right here in like an unflattering way, but it also looks really pretty. So, and I'm, I just, the tone of this is really nice for if you're near my skin tone. So I have these quads from the Rebel Rose collection um, that are really, really pretty, but again, they're limited edition. So the first one is Secret Garden Rendezvous, and it's got a navy blue, kind of a mulberry color, a shimmery light gold, and then kind of a glittery almost medium brown so definitely going to try that i have another one called bed of roses which has some really deep colors but then also this really pretty light pink shimmer um, and then there's another one called house of thorns that has a lot of deep colors that one i'm going to go ahead and donate while it's unopened because i know i'm not really drawn to those colors but i just want to get an idea of the formula of these so i'm going to start with the light gold in secret garden rendezvous i love that these are made into little flowers we're just doing a traditional Jessie look because I just want to see how these shadows perform. Oh, it's actually really nice. You guys, Wet n Wild has had amazing eyeshadow formulas for years. So I'm never surprised when their eyeshadows perform beautifully. And I'm really, I just like this kind of muted gold. It's, I can't call it necessarily cool toned, but it is kind of, do you see, it doesn't have a crazy like warm shift to it. And I think that is so pretty. So they also have this little eyeshadow brush in that rose line um, that I figured I would give a try. I'm just going to use it with nothing on it to kind of blend. It's a little awkward to hold. Blend that glitter there, or not glitter, the shimmer. So I'm going to go into, with this brush, this medium brown. It has like glitter in it. But it's a nice medium brown color. And really the glitter's not like showing up all over the face. Guys, this is blending so easily. The brush is doing a nice job. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of felt the brush, like it's really soft up there, but I'm like, mm. but I am like 
it's really blending these shadows beautifully. And these two shadows so far are really beautiful. So I'm kind of curious about this like rose, this rosy color, at least to swatch it. Oh my gosh. It's a very thin formula, but it is a really pretty color. I might take that and tap it in this outer corner. Just add a little pink to the look. So I'm gonna take the navy blue shade and I wanna line the eyes with this. It's right here in that original palette, the Secret Garden Rendezvous. I just wanna see how it does. So I don't know that I love these this deep blue. I don't feel like it's as punchy. Like a really good deep shadow, I can dip a brush like this into it and I can literally take it in one swipe and do a really dark line along my lash line. This one I'm continually swiping into over and over again. I don't think it looks bad, but it just takes a lot more work and it's still not quite as dark as I was anticipating. If you know you like to use dark shades for this, this might not be the best formula for it. But I think they blend really well and they're really pretty. So on the lower lash line, I also have these little, from their pump collection, their Keep Going Waterproof and Sweatproof Eyeshadow. So there were a couple of the shades I was intrigued by. There's this one called Running Naked, Naked. that's a really kind of pretty light champagne gold. Uh, it's not super brightening though, so it wouldn't work like on the inner corner or anything like that. And then I also have Protein Shake. And this is a beautiful, deep kind of chocolatey brown. And this is one I kind of want to smudge lightly along the lower lash line. I like the idea of it being, you know, kind of waterproof so then it can't really, you know, it's not going everywhere. But I do think this is going to take some smudging. But it's nice and that's one of those things that it's so quick to take a little pencil like this you don't have to have a special eyeliner for it but when you do have one like this it is kind of nice and of course this is technically an eyeshadow so you also could put it on the actual eyes above and etc but i liked the idea of using it for that so i'm going to throw on some mascara and then let's talk lips I ended up throwing a little bit of a pencil liner kind of on my waterline above and below. I use the collab liner I can link below. <sighs> I'm noticing a lot of the face makeup already breaking up. So like my nose looks like a mess. I was looking at it up close this whole area and it's hard to know if you can contribute it to the oil. That's why I always joke that makeup reviews where you're trying literally more than one product is the hardest thing because you have too many variables. Um, I think that the foundation stick is super hydrating and that's a part of what makes it so easy to apply. It looks great upon first application, but um, I'm going to have to see how it looks under over different primers because I don't know if it's the oil or if it's that foundation. I put the cushion on too. There's just a lot going on and it's all breaking apart. So I'm excited to try them without the oil. The products we're going to try for our lips today are the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suits and it's their High Shine Lipstick. I was pumped. These packaging wise look like my Dose of Colors lip glosses that I am, that are like truly my favorite lip gloss of all time, but they're 17 bucks. So if you can find something under $10 um, that can do a similar effect, I am all in. So the shade I'm initially drawn to, I already swatched these and I'm very excited about them, um, is Chic Got Real 943B. So let's just try this one on. Obviously I'm putting it on. I can't get this pink stain off. I even used a makeup remover. It's so comfortable so far. These are not sticky. They have nice color payoff. And they're like a thinner formula than you'd think. Like I just put that on, I feel like I was putting on a lot to cover my entire lips. And it what it didn't feel like, uh, it doesn't feel thick at all or sticky. It's just like comfortable. It's similar to those colors, it's not exact, but these are awfully similar. And these other colors, I'll show you some swatches right now. So from left to right, we've got wine is the answer. Then we have Taffy Tantrum, which is that bright pink. Then Flirt Alert. Then Peach Stole My Look. <laughs> and then Send Nudes is that kind of nude colored one. And then Bad Girls Club is the bright red. And then the one I just put on is at the end, Chic Got Real. So a nice little range there. I'm enjoying it so far. I will do a check-in so you guys can see how this is all wearing later. So right off the bat, some of the standout products. I really enjoyed the brushes, both this one and the uh, eye one, I was, I'm surprised at how good they are. And I'm pretty sure these are limited edition. So if you really were interested in them, you definitely wanna buy them now before they are no longer sold. Like I said, I really like the foundation stick, but I think it needs to be over um, a better primer. Um, I'm enjoying the cushion foundation again. I'm gonna use this a lot. So I'm excited to give that more of a try. 
I like this bronzer. I think it's a little bronzier, of course, now that I've backed up, it's everything's evened out a little bit more, but I do think it's, it applied really easily. This is probably one of my favorite things, this sponge. I am really, really, really excited to use this sponge more. The lip glosses obviously are just my cup of tea. I, the, the liquid cat suits that were their like matte liquid lipsticks, those did the job. They stayed in place, but they were really drying like most liquid lipsticks are. And so I never really got into them beyond, you know, I tried them, I'm like, these are good for what they are. I just, it's not my cup of tea. So those though, oh boy, I, I'm gonna be using those a lot as we head into spring. The eyeshadows I thought were really nice, except for what I mentioned about the darker shades. Um, but I do really, really like this uh, protein shake is the shade, this keep going. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by the partner up little blush stick. I mean, again, I'm excited to try it over different, that stupid oil, man, it just wrecked my day. So I'll do a check-in before I take all this off at the end of the day so you can see how everything is looking and wearing. Okay, check-in time, it is 10, oh geez, 10, oh man, I thought it was like 10, it's like 10.30, meaning I should be in bed. Anyway, <laughs> it's not all looking great. I think the eye look looks great. I think that under eye thing looks pretty darn good. I was kind of messing around with my eye here. That looks pretty good. But the foundations don't look great. So where I only had the foundation stick, I feel like it, it's just a lot of it's just worn off and I didn't like work out today or anything, you know, like that would maybe add a stressor to my day. Um, and then my nose I knew would be a mess because I had like basically two foundations on it and it was that oil that oil that oil i've already taken that oil and put it in my like regrets area of my closet because i'm like no um but like i said i will update you guys and try out that foundation stick elsewhere the lip product was nice and comfortable but it was still a lip gloss so it did wear off and i reapplied it again because i filmed a little bit more and then um again it just kind of wore off the highlighter i still think looks really nice i think it i don't think it really wore off too much you can see a little bit of it up there um, I think that highlighter is very nice. That's one I'm very excited to use some more. The bronzer kind of just faded away. I mean, do you guys feel like you can really see it? I feel like it just totally faded away. Um, there's little remnants of it, but it's just not really there. And again, I didn't like really sweat or do anything strenuous. I'll keep messing with them. You guys will see all of these products in a future review roundup. Different day, I've been trying that foundation stick. So today I used it with the Milk Hydro Gripping Primer. Now that's become like a favorite primer of mine very quickly because it is working beautifully under like every foundation I've ever tried because um, I feel like it holds onto it. So it is pricier. And I hate to pair like a really expensive primer with this foundation that, you know, is also cheaper, but it works really well. So I wanted to see how it performs. It definitely works way better with a gripping kind of a primer. So um, I just felt like with the oil, everything broke up, but with this, it looks a lot nicer. I don't think, the more I've tried this foundation stick, I don't think it is my favorite because I don't think it wears all day and I do think you, because it is hydrating, you do need to set it with a loose powder. So then you can never really get, like I feel like daylight perfects some stuff in its own way and I feel like it's making things look better than it really does, but I do feel like you can definitely see that I'm wearing foundation. You guys see what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think you get what I mean. You can't get that like fresh faced, true dewy look in person wearing this because if you're only wearing the foundation stick, you have to set it down because it is so, I just feel like it doesn't stay in place otherwise it creases like crazy. So that's my two cents. I like it, I will continue to use it, but I don't think it's ever gonna be like my favorite number one foundation. So I hope that you enjoyed this style of video. I love doing these reviews and I hope you'll come say hi to me on social media. It is GMBeauty89 everywhere and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.